Hey everybody, it's CW Reads, and um, yeah, I was bad. I bought some books, but one was only at full price, the rest were all thrifted, or I got them at the dollar store. So this video is going to be about new books that I bought, which I probably shouldn't have, but I couldn't not buy them, so I'm bad. The only book that I bought at full price, I got it off of Amazon, was Bridget Jones' Baby, The Diaries. I love the Bridget Jones Diary series, and I didn't even know this book was out. And I was searching for her name for something else, and I saw this, and I had to have it because I have all the other books. And I cannot wait to dive into this book. I cannot wait. Now, the books, oh, excuse me, I'm in my, uh, my fluffy pajamas, because they're comfy. These are the books that I bought at the thrift store. So, the first one I picked up was Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare, The Infernal Device. Now, I've read all of the City of Bones series, but I never read any of these, so I thought I would check them out and see if I liked them or not. So, I bought it at the thrift store at Savers. So, I mean, I didn't pay full price for it. I think I paid two bucks for it. So, if I don't like it, it's no big deal. But I heard a lot of people like this, so I can't wait to check this one out. And then I got two books by the same author. This one is called Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. He murdered women in cold blood. He terrorized an entire city. He taunted those of us who hunt, hunted him down. But despite all these horrors, at the end, I could not deny it. I was a girl who loved the Ripper. Now... This is an interesting take, and so it was at the thrift store, so I thought I'd pick it up. So, I got that one. And then the other one I got was Hunting Prince Dracula. And this one says, a man impaled by a sharp wooden stake, a young chamber maiden drained of all her blood. They say it's Prince Dracula rising from the dead. I say it's the living, not the dead, who should fear the most we should fear the most and then, so this is by the same author so i thought you know what if the other one's good at least i can get this one too because like i said they're both wait a minute is this book upside down somebody took the dust jacket off and put the book on the inside down. oh my goodness come on people I thought for a second there was two books in one. And then I've heard a lot of booktubers talk about this book, so I thought I would get it. And this is, a uh, remember, it's only a game, Carval. Carval? If you ever wanted to step into a living dream, here's your ticket. Stacy Lee, author of Outrun, The Moon Says. Admit one to be used is to gain entry into Carval. Main gate closes at midnight. Anyone who arrives later than that, this will not be able to participate or win this year's prize of one wish. And this is by Stephanie Garber. So I've heard some booktubers talking about it. So I was like, yeah, let's get it. Let's see what happens. And then the last one I picked up is called The Flint Heart by Katherine Patterson and John Patterson. The universe is full of magical things, patiently waiting for our wits to grow sharper. I believe this is a middle school or book. Yeah, the, the words are kind of big. So this is a middle school young adult book, but I just picked it up I just love the cover and I'm not a person that buys a book based on the cover so I thought I would it looks really good and I'm hoping I'll like it and that maybe I can talk my son into reading it too so this is the last book I picked up from the thrift store the big haul I did was 
was from the dollar store. Now, I found a dollar store in the next little town over connected to us. Well, I live in Las Vegas, so the next town over is Henderson. So, um, But I found a dollar store there, and let me tell you, oh my gosh, their dollar store book section was amazing. So I almost bought every book that they had. So hold on one second. I had to check some. So, the first book was the whole reason I bought the rest of the stuff that I saw there. I love the book, The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. I did not know there was a sequel to this book or another book written in the same world. And I put it on my list that I needed to find this book so I could buy it. Not only did he get it for a dollar, I got it in hardback. The Boy on the Bridge. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. This one will be read in March. I have plans for February. But I'm like, oh my gosh. Once upon a time in a land blatant by terror, there was a very clever boy. The boy thought the people thought the boy could save them, so they opened their gates and sent him out into the world to where the monsters lived. In The Boy on the Bridge, M.R. Carey returns to the world of his phenomenal USA Today and world of, word of mouth bestseller, The Girl with All the Gifts. I didn't even know. And I got it for a dollar. Like two days after I found out there was one. So, that one, oh, I cannot wait. Then I got this one called The Infinite Futures by Tim Workus. Now, if I say their na you guys' names wrong or the author's name wrong, I'm really sorry. I'm really bad at names. Exhilarating and brilliant unorthodox novel set in Brazil, Idaho, and outer space, and outer space, about an obsessive librarian, a down at heel, down at heel author, and a disgraced historian who together go on the hunt for the mysterious life changing book and find it. That right there was enough for me to pick it up. Historian, library, author, three of my favorite things getting this book. And then this is The Forgotten Book by Michlili Mitchfield Glaser. I think that's how you say it. I hope this is the first, not a sequel. Because I would feel really dumb if I got the sequel. Because a, there's a book called The Book Jumper. So I hope this isn't the second one in a series. I closed my eyes for a moment and leaned my head against the wall. What on earth was going on? I was 16 years old, almost an adult. I was a sensible person, for heaven's sakes. Was I seriously sitting here with an antique book wondering whether there was really such a thing as magic? Well, now I'm going to have to look. If there is, I need the other book. But this, this looks good already. So We Are Not Created Equal, The Ones by Daniel Swernbeck. Becker. A frightening, all too easy to imagine version of our reality. 17 year old Cody and her boyfriend James were two of the lucky ones randomly selected before birth to receive genetic engineering. Known as the ones, this 1% 1 of the population is healthy, beautiful, and talented. And to some, that's not fair. Mounting fear and jealousy of the one's success leads to the creation of the equal equality movement, which quickly gains enough political traction to demote Cody, James, and others like them to second-class citizens. 
Cody knows even before the brick smashes through her window that it's going to be bad. At school, the government and even family and friends turn against them. Cody begins to believe they have no choice but to protect their own. She draws closer to a group of radical ones led by the passionate and fevered, fevered K, and James begins to question just how far Cody is willing to go for the cause. You won't believe what happens next, but you should. And then, ooh, excuse me. And then, Enter a Glossy Web by Makina Rubish. George, please don't call her Georgina, has no idea what's in store for her when she's set to her erotic, ex- erotic, it's not erotic, <laughs> eccentric relatives following the disappearance of her brother. As she begins to settle in, she receives a note from Uncle Constantine informing her that he's in dire need of help. So George sets off, again, now on a mission to find her uncle. Along the way, she's joined by Mikhail and Caleb, two orphan boys in Cavadance, the talking map. Together, they form the Snapple, Schnaffer Hap Company, an alliance propelled into magical world full of enchantment and danger as they attempt to locate the timekeeper. What starts out as a mystery to unsolve George's brother and uncle's George's brother and uncle builds into an epic quest in the flyery. If they fail, they, the very cosmos will cease to exist. Are these hopeful heroes up to saving the past, present, and future for all the world? And I believe this is a middle school book also. How to Break a Boy by Lori DeVore. I wonder if I finally broke him. Olivia Clayton has mastered the art of tearing other down to stay on top. She and her best friend, Adrian, rule their small southern town like all good mean girls do, through intimidation and manipulation. Until Olivia suffers a family tragedy and catches Adrian sleeping with her boyfriend. Olivia decides to make a change, but finds it impossible to resist taking down Adrino one last time. Up to her old tricks, Olivia convinces golden boy Whit Durant to be her SAT tutor and her fake boyfriend. But when it starts to feel real, Whit gets caught up in Olivia and Adrian's war. Olivia may ruin everything she touches, but she won't go down without a fight, not if it means losing Whit. And definitely not if it means losing what's left of herself. Or maybe I'm the broken one. And then, The Beloved Wild by Melissa Ostrom. 60-year-old Harriet Winter can cook, clean, spin, and sew. She's a good daughter and certainly of an age to become a biteable wife. Biddable wife. Except for one problem, there's not a biddable bone in her body. And she will not marry Daniel Long, the neighbor whose initials, whittled on everything he possesses, spells D-U-L. Dull. Harriet wants to decide her own future. When her brother Gideon finds his plan to strike out for the Genesis Valley, Harriet decides to go too, but not as a girl. Disguised as an orphan named Freddie, Harriet makes her way to west by wagon with Gideon while trying to forget Daniel, about whom she's lately had second and third thoughts. At last, they arrive at the thick wilderness where Gideon intends to make his home, and it is here amid sickness, temptation, unexpected guests, and a never-ending battle to create a clearing in the woods that Harriet finally understands what it is she really wants from her life and from herself. And this is a Junior Library Guild selection. And then... This is called Everything Belongs to Us by Eugene Eugene Grace Witzer. Everything Belongs to Us. A striking debut novel about two young women of vastly different means, each struggling to find her own way in a country on the verge of an enormous social and political change. It takes place in... Sholo 1978 at a South Korean top university. And 
And then I picked up two copies of this book. One's for me and one's for my oldest um, child. And this is called a uh, Delirate Del Blue by Adam Rapp and Mike Cavaliero. In a hyperkinetic future, the ultimate act of rebellion is slowing down. And this is a graphic novel. The back says, Angela, read this book or let it read you. There's, They're everywhere and they're watching. Don't let them turn you into a number like the rest of us. Get away while you can. Yours, the silent one. And it's got Kurt Vonnegut kick the boot on the back. And this says, the future waits for no one. In a new world, speed and efficiency are everything in the popular zoom along in a perpetual stimulus haze. Angela thinks she's the only person in her family, maybe the only person on the planet, who sees anything wrong with this picture. But the truth is she's not alone. Angela finds herself recruited into a resistance movement where the key to rebellion is taking down slow, taking things slow. In their secret underground hide it, they create a... Life unplugged from the rapid-fire culture outside. Can they free the rest of the world before the power that shuts down their utopian experiment? And this is an LGBTQ book. So, and then... All That Was by Karen Rivers. Who Are We Without Her? And this is... Piper and Sloane are best friends. They grew up together, dressed alike, and never did anything without each other. To Sloane, Piper has always been extraordinary, fierce, and pretty, and powerful. The only thing that makes Sloane special is that Piper chose her for a sisterhood that was supposed to last forever. That is, until Piper caught Sloane kissing Piper's boyfriend, Soup, and the next day, Piper is found dead, washed ashore on a beach. As Sloane and Soup relive their deep, somewhat painful history with Piper and face a future without her, they are racked by question. Who's to blame for Piper's death? How do you make amends for hurting someone you love if that person is no longer around? And how can you ever move on and love again? Told from alternating perspectives, this is a story about the complexity of friendship, forgiveness, and growing up. And then, Annie B. Made for TV by Amy Dixon. 11-year-old Annie B. is used to being on the losing end of compromises to, and of comparison to her almost always best friend, Savannah. Savannah is MVP of the track team, has straight A's, and wins the coveted School Spirit Award. Fortunately, Annie does have one very spe specializing skill. Inspired as seen on TV commercial, Annie likes to invent products and write clever sales pitch to go along with them. So when an opportunity arises to audition for a local web show, Annie knows her future is set. She's going to wow the producers with her fabulous writing and made-for-TV announcement. TV announcer voice. Of course, things don't happen quite according to plan. Soon, Annie is worried about losing both the opportunity she's been training for her whole life and her best friend. And then, a lie for a lie. If picture's worth a thousand words, what's the cost of a secret? By Robin Mallory MacCreed. Kendra Sullivan loves taking pictures, but when a photograph reveals something unexpected, she sets out to investigate the situation. Before long, Kendra is torn between destroying her family as she knows it and keeping a very dark secret that might ultimately destroy her. It's a young adult mystery, and I don't read a lot of mysteries, but this one kind of intrigued me. <coughs> this is Secrets of Valhalla by Jasmine Richards. The Norse gods are real and closer than you think. Meet Buzz. He hates Friday the 13th. He thinks myths are hogwash, even though he's the son of a mythology professor, and his life is pretty tough at the moment. It's not every day that you find a famous weather woman bound by magic to a tree deep in the woods, or discover that the weather woman is, in fact, Sun Suna, the Norse goddess of the sun, and one of the seven-day guardians who keep 
time and order, but that's exactly what happened to Buzz and his new friend, Mary. And then there is Sweet Black Raves. Her magic protects the land, but not her heart by Christina Perez. Two proud kingdoms stand on opposite shores with only a bloody history between them. As best friend and lady in waiting to the princess, Barnwain is guided to, by two principles. Devoted to her homeland and hatred for the raiders who killed her parents. When she unknowingly saves the life of her enemy, he awakens her ancient healing magic and opens her heart. Ben Barnwain begins to, Branwin begins to dream of peace, but the princess she serves is not so easily convinced. Fighting for what's right, even as her powers grow beyond her own control, will set Branwin against her closest confidant and the man she's come to love. It's based on the star-crossed tale of Tristan and Isolette. Oh, I remember that one. I like that movie. And then the last one I got. And this one's a wowzer. Hoovenverse. And it goes all the way up to the the last male doctor. I can't believe I found this in the dollar store. This one... Has, it's got all this great stuff, and I like Doctor Who. I just need to get caught up on it. But but that was my book haul. I know I was bad. I'm not supposed to buy any more because, you know, I got all these other books I got to read. But at a dollar, I had to get them. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Um, I will have another video coming out on Sunday, which is my wrap up of everything that I read for this month, and I did finish my two TBR hack things for the whole year. And when I go off about one of the books, you will not be surprised. But bye, everyone.